right to questions if you want. You can tell that it's season has started. I've lost my voice, but I'm also married, and I have two small children, so it's probably all of the above. Um, no, but we're excited for the season. You know, it's uh, to, defend, to defend a title is difficult, um, but we're up for the challenge. We have a lot of returning players and some new kids and some transfers. Um, but we're excited for the leadership that we have to continue to pursue um, another title in March. Great. Outstanding. Uh, third row left. Uh, well, actually, we're going to go second row, middle, Whitney Harding, WCMH. Hi. Hey, uh, one of those returners is Amanda. How great is it to have that experience back in net as you go to defend this title? Well, as we know, we recruit from the backup. And so when you have somebody in five, five years under our, our belt and how we coach and how uh, we train, it's nice to have that. She's steady, she's calm, mentally calm, um, and very reliable. You know, it was a flip of a coin between her and Kirky last year, and we got a transfer in McLeod uh, from Duluth, actually. Um, so we're excited to have somebody push Teeley every day in practice. Enjoy preseason WCHA. I mean, she's only a sophomore. I mean, what does yeah. she? Br I mean, what does she bring, and how much better is she going to even be this year? Which is crazy. Yeah, you know, I had all one-on-one -on -one meetings with all the players um, just a couple weeks ago, and she has her own personal goals, and uh, they are high. And when you're um, of her caliber, they should be high because the Olympics will be the following year. That's one of them. Um, you know, she was our first ever Rookie of the Year. We've won League Rookie of the Year, but not National Rookie of the Year. I did coach both of her older sisters, uh, so I knew what I was getting. But um, although her sister was an Olympian, I would still say Jin Jincy was, although phenomenal, Joy, I think, is going to break many more records than her sister. Um, and uh, she's just got the size and the power. I want her to play a little bit more like Tarzan and less like Jane and just go after people. Um, but she, uh, she has it in her, and um, we're excited for what she, can, what she will look like over the next three years. Right behind her, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Nadine, you had said last year you thought that was the most you know, talented team that you've ever had. How do you feel like the talent of this year's team compares to what you had a year ago? Yeah, that's true. Good memory. Um, that was a phenomenal team that we had, but I look at it as um, we've just reloaded, you know. Um, uh, we don't have as much quantity on the team. Our bench is smaller, but the quality is still very good. You know, we were just putting together our power play, and uh, we had hard times deciding who should be where because there is a lot of offensive talent. It's going to require some coaching because we've got a couple transfers, and their style of how they played is very different from our style, being very aggressive and relentless. Um, and then we've been after them in their fitness because I think other programs train very differently, differently than we do here at Ohio State. When you are, you know, reloading the roster from one offseason to the next. So three things we look for. I I'd say when we're out recruiting, uh, your skating ability, your IQ, and your relentless personality. I I will make that prettier and uh, better for the media of what it, than I normally say. <laughs> um, but you have to have two of those three. But one of those two has to be that relentless pursuit. Uh, because we're not going to coach you up from a 5 to a 10 every day. I'll coach you down from a 10 to a 7, but we're not going to – you got to be ready to go, you know. Um, it's very sexy to want to come here to Ohio State, you know. It's uh, bedazzling. The brand speaks for itself, and winning national championships and having jewelry is something that kids want to be a part of. But when you get on the inside, it's hard as hell. So they're starting to understand that. Not nervous or, or backing off from it, but – they're starting to feel what it takes to win. Right next door, Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Yeah, just uh, obviously you guys came really close to repeating it in, uh, two years ago, but what, what did you learn from that experience, I guess, of trying to repeat as national champions, and, and what makes that so difficult? It's funny. I had Tom Ryan, the wrestling coach, think, oh, you're so close to a three-peat. So thanks, Tom. But um, And then you had to bring it up again. But um, it actually... You know, of course, it motivates you. Um, actually, funny story. Um, so in 22, we won the gold. 23, we won the silver. First practice, I had the silver trophy at the center ice to remind them, do you like this color? So, and we skated some laps around it, and I put it up in the locker room all year so they'd have to continuously stare at what silver looked like. Um, and then last year, of course, we won the gold. But I always think of when you're number one, yes, you have the target on your back. I always thought of it as like a na in NASCAR, the lead um, rider. Everyone is 
drafting off of you. So it's a lot harder to stay in the front, right? And that's how I feel sometimes is that we're in this NASCAR race and we're the lead driver. People continue to pursue us and we got to keep up. You know, it's still very impressive, obviously, two golds and a silver in three years. Um, what ha what has been, do you think, the main ingredient in sustaining this program's success and, and staying at the map of top, not just getting there? Yeah, I think it's how we train the athletes. Like, we're not afraid to train them hard, you know, with the resources we have thanks to our football program. Um, we know how hard we can push them without breaking them, and they don't even realize how hard they can go. And we always say, you know, a Navy SEAL saying is your body can endure more pain and can go farther than you know that it can. It's your mind that quits. And so we're really big on pushing them and raising the bar every day because they also say the only easy day was yesterday. And so that's how we have that philosophy and mindset in our locker room, is that we will push you more than anybody else can. Because when I started this program, we were 500 for 18 years. And the one thing that helped me bring this team to where we are today was that relentless FU mentality of we're gonna keep going after you. But just because we start to bring in talent, I don't wanna lose who we were, that blue collar team, because we have talent. If we have both, you know, now we become very dangerous. So I think that sets us aside for most people. Uh, front row, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah. Um, what's the latest on the <coughs> arena? What have you heard about where it stands, if anything's happened with it? Um, I haven't heard too much. I know that there's a couple more meetings coming, and I'm just going to leave it in the hands of our administration right now. Um, but they know we want one. <laughs> and I was just going to say, the girls have deserved one. So um, we do know that it's a Title IX issue, and we're after it. And if you know of anybody that wants to donate and, you know, um, get us a rink. But uh, we do need one. Um, we want one. But we've had a lot of success without one. So when we recruit, I continue to recruit that blue-collar kid that, that shouldn't be the reason you choose a school. Semi-related right, arena, but just with the house settlement and the changes coming to the college athletics landscape, I think it's, it, given your status as a program, you'd probably be safe. But how, cons how much concern is there for the quote-unquote non-revenue sports to that you're going to be protected, that you'll be able to run a championship-level program? Yeah, you know, we're in our preliminary stages in the House case, and we're going to learn more on the 26th, and I'm learning as I think our administration is learning, but at the end of the day, we want our sport to be competitive all around. Uh, right next door, Tim May, uh, Letterman Rose. Yeah, uh, Coach, uh, you touched on it a minute ago, but when you, what, what gave you that mentality of what you wanted from your program, if you understand what I'm saying, once you showed up at Ohio State, when, when did that show up in your coaching uh, approach, so to speak, that would set this apart. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning from an average program. Um, what was the impetus, you know, that made that happen? Yeah, you know, uh, I took the first year to watch and observe because I came from another Big Ten school that was very successful, both as a player and uh, I coached them for five years. And when I was there, we had an undefeated season and we won four in five years. And so um, I just watched... And it was very, um, very quickly, early, I found some of the weaknesses within the program of accountability. And I was raised by a single mom, didn't have a license, used to go to hockey on the back of her bicycle, on the back seat of her bicycle. We didn't have a car. So I was blue collar, had the Rocky my, mentality. And I knew every kid could possess that, but did they want to possess it? And I, I was after them hard early, to be honest with you. And I set a tone early early and um, we had to weed out some weak and the strong survived I guess yeah. it, but, you know maybe not a moment but month or whatever when was it that you that it became aware to you that this was getting through that your approach was working well to be honest after that year I worked throughout the first year with an active Navy SEAL in the focus three group that we had and we created our culture blueprint. And then I, at the end of the year, I showed it to our captains. And I remodeled our um, coaches 
uh, landscape of what that looked like. Because I don't know if you guys are aware, but I got hired, <coughs> excuse me, hired end of August. And I met the team for the first time on the road at the first game. And so I was drinking out of a fire hydrant. I had an eight-month-old and a two-year-old. So, um, But to your point, I, um, I removed alcohol from the season. And because what I noticed was everybody liked to tailgate and party. And I just simply said, you're not good enough to do both. You're not being rewarded on the ice. And so the, I would say, defining moment was actually my 40th birthday, October 19th, when five kids broke that rule. And the rest of the team held them accountable and was making them run stairs in the morning. And I got a call from the athletic trainer. Why is your team running stairs? I said, they're not running stairs. It was my captains holding them accountable and the entire team woke up at 5.30 in the morning to make sure those five did that because they wanted to buy into what I was trying to teach them. And that's when I knew the culture was starting to shape was because I didn't have to do it anymore. I didn't have to enforce the rules. The team did. And then that year, in my second year, we went to the Frozen Four. Not quickly, following up on that, the silver trophy, you had them skating around <laughs> a year ago this time. What are they skating around this year? <laughs> You're so yes, I understand what you're saying. Two gold trophies and an empty X for a third. I just made that up, but I think I might do that. If I could follow up earlier about the, the rank, and you mentioned sort of them, you would like one, and the team deserves one. Um, what, would, what would it do for the program to have a, a bigger, newer rank? Um, I think it also, well, it would <laughs> it'd make recruiting a little easier, I think. Uh, our recruiting's fine, but I just think it shows um, our support in our game in the city of Columbus and at Ohio State. I think it could really grow hockey immensely in the state of Ohio. I don't know how many here are actually hockey fans, but I have two small children, and there's a lot of kids that are playing hockey, so the demand is high, but the supply is very low. And you can make money, $350 an hour, on renting out ice. So I think it could be profitable for our program as well, or for the institution. So I think it's just something that's earned and deserved to show that the institution is supporting our athletic, um, our hockey program, um, but also to grow hockey here in Columbus that we know we have with our Blue Jackets and our men's program here. Uh, Coach, you have a trio of freshmen from Shattuck High School um, in Minnesota. How important do you think it is in your recruiting process to not only recruit players coming from a hockey school that has prestigious uh, history, but also um, develop, uh, get players that uh, come from the same school? Well, hopefully they like each other, right? <laughs> That's usually what I ask the top recruit. Do you guys get along before we recruit the other kids? Um, but I think it's important because as you build a program, like I said, you're building a culture. I mean, no one, last year we had one, but no one's from Ohio on our team. So we are family, we are each other's family. And so we have to make sure that we're recruiting the character as well as the skill. And they have to know what they're signing up for too, right? So um, of course we trust in Shattuck St. Mary's because they produce a lot of all Americans and Olympians and we trust in their program and how they train their athletes. So when they transition to our program, it's not a tough start for them. But again, you're, you're recruiting the player as well, and I have a lot of trust in Gordy at Shattuck that um, when he speaks highly of one of his athletes, then I believe in, in that person as well as their hockey ability. Right in front of him, Tom Orr, Buckeye Huddle. Mm. You have an opportunity this year to play in Wrigley Field, which is something that I'm guessing when you were a uh, women's hockey player in Minnesota, probably was not something you thought was going to be on no, your radar. Cool. What, is, what is that opportunity like for you in terms of a platform for your program? I mean, Chicago is another hot spot for hockey with the Blackhawks. Um, my associate head coach, James Wisniewski, played 14 years. And he was drafted by the Blackhawks. So he actually played in 2004 in that outdoor game. So he's excited to go back now as a coach and play. Um, but again, I think it's just the experience for the athletes to be able to perform on such a prestigious landmark in athletics as Wrigley Field. Um, it's going to be 
cold as well, so I'm looking to find something good to wear. Um, but, you know, again, um, I think it says a lot when they had the opportunity to host a women's hockey team, hockey game, and they only invited two teams. And the fact that we were one of those two, when I look back like eight years ago of where we were, I don't think we ever would have been considered. So it's just all surreal to see the transformation. I mean, it, some, some of it's my hard work, but it's a lot of the athletes that bought in and stuck around and, and embraced the suck, embraced the productive discomfort to get to where they are today. And now they're a unified front and I'm very proud of them to have that ability and to take you know, women's hockey to Chicago, which is a very fun city, and showcase what women um, are able to do in the game of hockey. Went from a volunteer assistant this year to the associate head coach. Right. What has he brought to your team over the years that made you decide that he was ready for that kind of challenge? So I don't know if a lot of people actually know James Wisniewski and how he played the game. He was very tough and physical, kind of like how we play. Um, his IQ, though, was off the charts compared to a lot of defense. And um, I just think that he brings that. You know, you're replacing Peter Elander, who had a very impressive background. And I think with James and his love for the state of Ohio, playing for the Blue Jackets for a few years, um, his family loves Ohio. So I think that James brings in a lot of um, physicality and IQ and the, a defensive um, shaping our defensive in a different way that we're going to try, actually, this year that I'm excited for. Um, if it doesn't work, it's James's fault. It was his idea. Um, but I think that he brings in, you know, um, a wealth of hockey knowledge that I'm excited to learn from, as well as Klein, my assistant, and our players. I thought I heard you say you've had a couple discussions or meetings about the new arena. Correct. Uh, Over eight years, yes. Yes. <laughs> and now we have a new athletic director. You have mm -hmm. a new boss. Right. How would you describe those discussions? And do you feel, at least from what I know about the lacrosse situation, there's a lot of private fundraising done by the coaches even. And do you feel like that's a part of your job? I haven't specifically been asked to help fundraise. I'd be more than happy to do that. I think I'm pretty good with people, so maybe. <laughs> but um, I, I do trust in Ross a lot. I think he is a businessman. I think he always seems like comes across as he has a plan. And he told me straight up, Nadine, I don't know when it will be built, which I appreciate because I felt like I was being told it's happening, it's happening, and I just don't want to give that false hope to recruits anymore. I can work with I don't know. You know what I mean? I can't work with maybe two, three years. It will be built, he said. He just is uncertain at this time. We do have a president that is very supportive in our project and in the game of hockey, and I think the two of them collaborating, they both seem very wise, and I trust in them and, and their process. And you know, I'm focused right now on winning hockey games, and if they want my input or they want to bring me into a meeting, that's fine. Uh, but, again, I just want to continue to win trophies and wear jewelry. Uh, Cameron T. Robinson still has questions. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you don't know me so well by now. <laughs> I'm almost there. Almost okay. There. Uh, I, obviously, you guys went overseas. Yes. This is awesome. just, when you're putting together a team that's – you kind of retooling the team from a championship year. How does being playing games overseas prepare you for, for, the, for, the, for the season? Well, we got a little sneak peek, right, of, of what we're going to have this weekend. I think they're stronger, obviously, than where they were a couple of months ago. But I was pleasantly surprised with um, both Sweden. We played Sweden's national team over in Sweden. And um, I was very impressed with our team playing so physical, but especially playing on an olympic size sheet and being able to play that way. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's 15 feet wider on an Olympic size sheet. And um, so I think that our team actually showcased, like, again, our speed and our relentlessness and our goaltending. So um, we outshot them pretty considerably. So the one thing I would say is got to work on execution. Um, but, but we're getting there. And it was a good start, uh, more so for our team building of and bonding, you know, with a couple new staff members and then um, – a lot of new players. And we have one final question, Bill Rabinowitz. Okay, yep. we'll, we'll come back to you with you. You mentioned that, that you don't have any Ohio players on the team. I, I know people who are involved in growing the, 
uh, girls game. Where where is that? Um, how close is that to Ohio being able to produce players that are capable of playing for for you? I don't think they're there yet. I think we have a couple one-offs. You know, we have one that we're interested in. Um, that's from Ohio, so that's, you know, we're hopefully starting to chip away at that. Um, again, you know, my kids play at the Battery, and I know that there's the AAA Blue Jackets, and they're starting to have programs in the summer to have kids go into tournaments, a AAA girls team in particular that they're hoping that I will coach or one of my players will coach. And, um, again, seeing the lack of opportunity for my daughter from coming from Minnesota to Ohio is upsetting. And when we moved, that's what they said. My son was now going to be a football player than a hockey player. Um, but that's okay. I think the money's better in football. Um, so with that, you know, I think that that's just a start of, of what we can do. They have a couple AAA programs with the under-14s, looking for under-12s in the girls' youth. So if I can help in any way with the time that I, I can commit, I would be more than happy to. Because again, it's there. It's just we got to provide opportunities because there's not enough ice times for these kids. And we'll wrap things up with Whitney Harding, WCMH. Tim asked about trophy motivation, yeah. but in the conference preseason poll, you guys are two from the coaches. Is there any motivation with that? Of course. Um, I always like when people don't like us, <laughs> if that makes sense, you know. Um, I like that that motivates me. I hope it motivates the players. And uh, I do, I've felt that ever since I've been at Ohio State. It's funny, I know that football says it's Ohio State against the world. And we used to say that too, we said against everyone. Um, but you do feel that, like you could be the number three, I mean, sorry, number one for three years and very rarely still get ranked number one in the preseason poll. But I could care less about the preseason. I just care about March. But we will use that to ignite our fire for sure. McKenna this weekend yeah. is going to play field <laughs> hockey on Friday, yeah. ice hockey on Saturday, yeah. and field hockey on Sunday. That's are just you, normal for her uh, for the past three years. <laughs> are you ever not amazed by her? No. I mean, um, McKenna came in as a transfer from Wisconsin, and as soon as she went into the ho ice hockey uh, transfer portal, I had Jared, the field hockey coach, calling me, Coach, you got to go after her. And I was hesitant of how we're going to balance that, but um, McKenna's grades have actually gone up with this structure that we've created with field hockey and ice hockey. Um, and her pursuit is to play hockey in the P-Dub in the Olympics. And she just happens to be a really good field hockey player that I think is uh, in the top five or 10 in scoring in field hockey. Um, and so we also have a, a player next year coming in that's a lacrosse player that's number two in her position in the country. So if we can keep helping other uh, female sports here, we will t continue to do that. But joking aside, McKenna is a um, sensational person. Um, how she balances it when she's not able to compete with us because of her allowed allotted time with compliance she's there watching and cheering the girls on running the clock so she's very visible and she's our captain so one of our captains so I'm I am very um impressed with her and how she can balance both sports that overlap Mark, thank you so much I do have one final question have yeah. you ever had the cinnamon roll at the Duluth Grill <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so I don't <laughs>